All right, we are in geometry lesson 16-1, doing some more algebra one stuff, graphing quadratics. So today's date is Tuesday, April 23rd, 2019. All right, so I want to talk about these four words. By the way, the answers are right behind Chewy. So Chewy can literally look to his right and he will have all four answers. I'm literally reading off of those posters. Same equations, same everything. I'm going to be talking about the same word in a different context. The context is in bold here, expressions. Notice that I have an expression over here because there's no equal sign. If I have no equal sign, that's called an expression. If I have an equation, that means I do have an equal sign, then it's going to be a slightly different word. If I have a function like f of x or y equals, that's going to be in my new context, or graphically. In different contexts, I have different words to describe this word. So. Quiet raised hand. Expressions have what? And of course, I always forget to do the participation cards. Does anyone want to help me out? India, give your hand first. Expressions have what? Quiet raised hand. Look behind you if you don't know. Expressions have what? Cheyenne. <laughs> Write it down. Expressions have roots. Thank you, Cheyenne. And once you get your card, you can pass it back to me. Geometry and Cheyenne is there. All right. Equations have what? Quiet raise hand. Easy, easy XP, Chewy. Solutions, write it down. So this word roots is basically the same thing as solutions, just in a different context. So there's Chewy, there's Cheyenne, and coming back here to give Chewy his XP. All right, functions have what? Quiet raise hand. Martine, zeros. Martine, there's your XP. And finally, graphs have what? You can even look at this graph on the right hand side. What are those things called? India? X-intercepts. Right down, yep, India's x-intercepts. Thank you, India. All right, a ton of people already have their cards in. Um, oh, wow, yeah, there's a bunch of people missing today. Yeah, so these words that I just wrote in blue, these are all the same type of word, but in a slightly different context. So if you see a problem that says, find the zeros or find the roots, find the solutions, those are all asking for the same thing. All right, so. Yesterday, I promised that we would be finding the y coordinate of the vertex. You found the x coordinate of the vertex yesterday, so we'll get a little bit of review. First of all, how do I find the x intercepts? What do I set y to? Quite raised hand. What do I set y to to find the x intercepts? I see India's hand. I need to look for more hands. What do I set y to? If I had this f of x or this y, what do I do with this f of x right here? Sam, yeah? Do you make that zero? You do make that zero. Thank you, Sam. Set y to zero. All right. Then I'm going to find the x coordinate of the vertex. So right now we just found the x intercepts. Say maybe our x intercepts were at 3 and 5, like our example up here. Once we find 3 and 5, what do I do to find the vertex? Again, the vertex is this bottom most point. So this thing I'm calling the vertex. How do I find the x coordinate of that vertex? This coordinate right here. How do I find that coordinate? This is what India told us yesterday. So if India puts up her hand, I can't call in here. This is her definition of how to find the vertex from yesterday. Does anyone remember? If you don't, look back at your notes. What do we do? 16-1 on Monday. Come on, guys. You got this. I know we're really low energy. Like, look back at your notes. 16-1. I'm not going until someone can answer this one. Someone aside from India. What do we do to find the x coordinate of the vertex? Yeah, Colby. Uh, Yeah, so you can say two things here. Average of the x-coordinate, which is what Colby said, and Colby, what were you about to say? Uh, the x-intercepts. Right. 
Yeah, average of the x intercepts. So you can say average of the x intercepts, or maybe even a formula. I'm going to put the formula in here for my notes. So say you have two x intercepts, x1 and x2. I'm going to add the x intercepts, and then I'm going to divide them by 2. So add both of the x intercepts, then divide by 2. Thank you, Colby. All right, and this is the tricky part. Anyone can answer this one, even if you don't have a card. How do I find the y coordinate? I just found the x coordinate of the vertex. I know this spot, the x coordinate. I need to now find the height, this y. That's the new question. What is the y coordinate of the vertex? Anyone have an idea of how to find that? Notice that it's on the parabola. It's part of the equation of the parabola. Good guess, but no. Uh, India, go for it. A uh, good guess, but not quite. So Jaden and India both get XP. You do get XP. Oh, that was the wrong button. Whatever. All right, and I'll give you the answer. Plug in. Plug in the answer that I just got a number two. So plug in from step two. In step two, we found the x coordinate of the vertex. You have an x number. If I have an x, then plug it into the equation. This is the equation right here. If I found the x to be 4, plug in 4 here and here. I actually plug in the 4 and I figure out what the height is, what the y value is. I'll show you how to do that in example 1. All right, you guys know how to do step 1 and 2 already. You guys are pretty good about doing that. We'll practice step 3 together. Step 1 and step 2 I need volunteers for. Someone do step 1 for me. There's two volunteers that I'll need for step one. Someone set up step one. Sam, go for it. X minus seven. X plus five. Yep, okay, I'm gonna write out those in two steps. You did both steps for me, thank you so much. X plus five. So we set Y to zero, and then Sam used the zero product property to set both of those to zero. So you just said X minus seven is equal to zero, and X plus five is equal to zero. Going so fast. All right, yeah, thank you, Sam. And Sam's marble. All right. All right, ask me questions now, especially those of you that were missing yesterday's lesson. Does anyone need review on the zero product property? Not a one of us. Oscar, what's going on? All right, easy XP. Someone solve both those equations for me. Someone solve both of those for me. What do I do? Indian Sam keep raising their hands over and over again. I want to try to give it to someone new. Easy XP. Not a one of us. All right, India, go for it. Sorry, Oscar, you didn't get it up quite in time. I'll try calling you next time. I guess I shouldn't be boxing these because they're not really my final answers. They're only the x-intercepts. So what we just did here, graphically, and again, you don't need to write this down. I'm just trying to make sure that we're all on the same page. I just found on a graph that this parabola crosses at negative 5 and positive 7. So this coordinate is 7. This coordinate is negative 5. I know where these x-intercepts are. I know where, them, where they are, so I now need to find this x coordinate of the vertex. Notice that it should probably be positive because the x intercepts are slightly more on the positive direction than the negative direction. So I now need to do step two to find the x coordinate of the vertex. Who can help me do step two? You want to give it a shot, Oscar? So I have these x-intercepts. What do I do with them? What equation am I doing? You just got to gotta use this one right here. Use this equation. We're on step two. So tell me what to do with these x-numbers that I just found. 
There it is. Add them, divide by 2. 7, and I'm going to add that to a negative 5. And divide by 2. You can do it right after the lesson. All right, Sam, you want to reduce it for us? It's going to be 1. Why? Yep. And then over two. Perfect. So that was the x coordinate. Perfect. Yes. Thank, thank you, Oscar. Thank you, Sam. Oscar and Sam. Two marbles. One, two. That was step two. We're on to step three. This one will try it out. Anyone want to give it a shot? We've never done this before. We've only seen what we're supposed to do in step three. What do we do with this one? What do I do with it? Yeah, Colby. Plug it into the problem. Yeah, plug it in. So I'm, I have my original equation right here, x minus 7, x plus 5. And in the place of each of these x's, Colby just told us, this one gets plugged in here and here. So I now have a new equation. We'll do it in black here. y is equal to, can you read it off for us, Colby? There it is. Yeah, thank you, Colby. All right. All we did was plug in the 1 to our original equation. I need someone to simplify this. I need them to add the insides and then finally multiply. Who can simplify that for me? Come on, guys. We got this. I don't see any hands. See one hand, uh, two hands. India, go for it. Yeah, thank you. So my y coordinate is negative 36. My x coordinate is 1. I'm going to pause there for a sec, make sure that everyone can follow along. If I'm doing these parentheses correctly, they should be the same number, just plus and minus of each other. So one's positive, one's negative. All right, and I'm almost done. Again, if I look back to the question, the question was asking, what is the vertex? The vertex was that bottom most point, and sometimes it's the top most point. I need the x and y coordinate of the vertex. So the x coordinate was 1, the y coordinate was negative 36. So my final answer, I'll do this in red, was 1, comma, negative 36 and box it. I took the x coordinate 1, I took the y coordinate negative 36, together these two numbers are my answer. All right. What's the other answer? That's, that's it, just 1 comma negative 36. I got that from part 2, which was finding the x coordinate, and part 3, finding the y coordinate. How do you plug that in? Uh, you, that's just the answer, it's a, it's a point. The, the coordinate for the x is 1, the coordinate for the y is negative 36. All right. I had a lot of silence. Can I get a fist of five? How well are you following? Just be honest. If you're not following because you're just not having the energy, you can give me the two. I just need to know what your honest opinion is. How well are you following? What are you doing, Aurelio? Three and a half, four. Yeah. Three and a half, four. I'm seeing three, five, four. Emily is a four. She was a four, three, five. Jaden, what were you? Three and a half. Four. Three and a half. At Ziri, what are you at? Three. Leah's at a three. Two and a half. Okay. All right, let's go on to example two, and then we can be done. Example two. All right, just walk me through. Actually, yeah, we'll walk through this one because it is slightly harder. I wanted to do group work, but it is a slightly different problem. I'm on step one, doing the same three steps over and over here. Step one, someone tell me what to do. Uh, set them to zero. Set what to zero, Jaden? The Ooh, careful. Well, I mean, you're you're going really fast. You're correct that you do set both of them to zero. Um, but before that, what is actually set equal to zero from step one? Just reading off of step one. Uh, y. Exactly, yeah. Thank you, Jaden. So this y is no longer y. It's a zero is equal to... 3 eighths, x minus 5, and x plus 3. 
there's kind of an important distinction to make that Jaden already figured out, I'm guessing, which is, yes, you're only setting x minus 5 and x plus 3 to 0, but technically if I have three things here, one, two, three things, all three of those things could be 0, but it doesn't make sense for 3 eighths to be 0. 3 eighths isn't 0, 3 eighths is 3 eighths. So only set the things equal to 0 that could possibly be 0. And as Jaden said, the only two things that can be 0 are x minus 5, so set x minus 5 equal to 0, and the other thing is x plus 3 could also be 0. Thank you, Jaden. And I get Jaden's card now. All right. Easy XP, someone solve. Preferably someone that has their card. This is really easy to solve, guys. you guys are having a nice meal with me. Okay, anyone at all, please someone solve. Beverly, you want to go for it? Perfect. Thank you, Beverly. All right. The problem with this one is it's slightly different. I need to find the actual x-intercept. Not just the x-coordinate, but the actual x-intercept. So... The x-intercept here is going to be something, comma, something. Something, comma, something. Is it 5, comma, 0 or 0, comma, 5? Anyone have an idea? India? Yep, it always goes x, comma, y. So if we ever forget, you can write it underneath. It's x, comma, y. And since x is 5, that's what this literally says. x equals 5, then it goes 5, comma, 0. And therefore, we have a negative 3, comma, 0. Okay, that was part of the answer. It said find the x-intercepts. We just did that. These are the x-intercepts. So x-intercepts, here they are, 5, comma, 0, and 3, comma, 0. We also need to find the vertex. We'll write it down here once we have room. But now I need to do step 2 and step 3. I'm going to do that up here in the top right area. So, how do I do step two? Someone help me out. Good review. <clears throat> Say it again, Aurelio. I don't know how to do it. Again. Just follow this equation right here. There it is. What two numbers do I add, Aurelio? There it is. Five and negative three. I add those two and divide by two. Do you want to keep working on that, really, or pass it off to someone else? So negative 2 on the top, you say? Over 2. There's a tiny little error here. Yeah, positive 2. And that's equal to 1. OK. So randomly, example 1 and example 2 came out to the same x-coordinate. That was just coincidence. Yeah, thank you, Aurelio. So that's the x-coordinate. All right, Aurelio, I can get your card. And you are in once I open up this guy. Participating. All right. Now I need to find the y coordinate. How do I find the y coordinate? I'm on step three now. Someone help me out. Preferably someone that hasn't participated, but we do have some backups. I haven't heard from Cheyenne or Atziri or Emily. I heard from Aurelio just this last step. <coughs> Beverly, go for it. You, yeah, plug in the one. So the one is going to go for this x and this x. Those both turn into one. So can you read off what we have? Y equals 3 eighths. There it is. Yeah, thank you. All right, and I need one final volunteer to tell me how to simplify that. Go for it, Sam. I'm just reading off of right up here, so it was uh, 1 minus 5. Yeah, good to check, though. 
You're not solving it. <laughs> okay, just a question. Um, did I give Beverly her XP? I did, okay. All right, India, go for it. Perfect. So this now turns into a negative 16 times 3 eighths. And I'll pause right there, but if you could finish that up after everyone finishes writing that down. We had a negative 4 and a positive 4. Again, as I said, you should have a positive and negative version of the same number. 4 times 4 is 16. Negative times a positive is a negative. So we have 3 eighths times this negative 16. All right, India, carry on. This is now negative 2. And 4. This goes down to 4. And it's going to be negative 6 over 4, which is negative 2. Are you, are you sure that this one reduces to a 4? What are you dividing the top and bottom by? Oh, I did the wrong number. It should be a negative 4. I mean, it should be a negative 4 for the 16, and then a negative, and then a 2. I think you can even reduce any more, even more, because you have the negative 2 on the top. Let's divide the top and bottom by 8, right? 1. Yep. Eight. So the 8 turns into a 1. So again, we're cross-reducing. This was a negative 16. I'm going to divide that negative 16 by 8. Negative 16 divided by 8 is negative 2. 8 divided by 8 is 1. And then from there, India, our final answer is... Negative 6 over 1, which is negative 6, exactly. Cool. And then, India, can you read off our vertex finally? There it is. Yeah, India took the x coordinate that we found from step 2, and you took the y coordinate that she did for step 3, and put them both together for the vertex. All right, thank you, India. All right, I don't want to know how well you follow the lesson. I want to know with a fist of five, how well do you think you can do these problems on your own without any help at all out of five? Five is I can do it really well without any help. Three or four is maybe just a little bit of help. Two is, yeah, I'm totally lost. One is I just woke up. I'm seeing three, 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 five, three, 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 five. Is that a two or a three, Oscar? Two, okay. And a three. Martin, what are you at? Three, okay. Please write your summary. If you forget step three, that was our new thing. Maybe step three needs to be in your summary. If not, step one, two, and three. All we're doing over and over again is one, two, and three. So please write your summaries now. 